over there. Okay, praise God. All right. On the count of three, shout hallelujah and send it around the world. One, two, three. Hallelujah. Clap for the Lord. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Let's all be seated in the house of the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Okay. Uh, yeah, we good? All right. Praise the Lord. All right. So let's uh, go ahead and pray before we get into this word. Amen. All right. We'll get right into this and have a dynamic time in the Lord. Father, we just thank you in the name of Jesus for blessing us, blessing us to be here this morning. We thank you for giving us yet another opportunity to sit at your feet and to receive fresh rhema from heaven. I bind the work of the devil right now in the name of Jesus, that there be no distractions, but that your word would go forth and accomplish that which you've sent it to. We thank you, Lord, and we surrender to the power of the Holy Ghost now in Jesus' name. Amen. amen. Church said amen. amen. Praise God. Clap for the Lord. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Well, look at your neighbor say, get your Bible out. All right. So listen, the reason God does all this stuff for us is so that we can be a blessing to the earth. Amen. And I'm telling you right now, we're going to preach the blessing part four. And I'm emphasizing God's mark. God has marked all of us and his him marking us makes us standouts in the earth. Amen. Look at your name and say you are a standout in the earth. Okay, so this is what God intends. Let's go to Genesis, Genesis chapter 12, Genesis chapter 12. And we want to look in verse um, two. And we're just going to look in the Amplified. We're just going to look in the Amplified on this one. And we've been covering this, so some of this is going to be review, but I just got to uh, make sure we cover a couple things before we leave the series. And so he says here, uh, Genesis chapter 12, verse two in the Amplified, he says, and I will make of you a great nation and I will bless you with abundant increase of favor. So I'm, I'm talking about what God is doing. This is something God is placing on his people. He says, um, and make your name famous and distinguished. We'll talk about that in a moment. And you will be a blessing. Look at your name and say, I am blessed to bless. Okay, and you will be a blessing, look at it says, dispensing goods to others. What if you were to look at yourself as a distribution center? Come on, somebody. How many of y'all ready to get into that place where you can fund an entire community if God says so? Come on, come on. You can meet the budget on whatever. See, listen, God is not in the business of taking from you so that you don't have nothing. See, that's not what God does, because I'm going to show you right here. We are his greatest advertisement. And so this has to be an empowerment. So if I'm just dis dispensing goods to others, I mean, no, I've got to have plenty of goods because he's not going to have me give from a dry place. Amen. And so now let's let's dig into this. He says that word we saw up there that I wanted to touch on was distinguished. This is what God is doing. He's making us famous and distinguished. Don't worry about the famous part because it's not like you think in the world. Like, oh God, I want to be a YouTube star. No, God's not doing that. His, his, his fame is going to be greater. This is a kingdom. How many know uh, people could be a, you could be a YouTube star in the earth and don't nobody know you in heaven. Come on. Don't know angels recognize you. Come on. You have no power. You're just walking around here getting likes, but you're powerless. So that ain't the fame I'm talking about. I'm talking about kingdom. And this is spiritual. Amen. And so we need to get this. He says, you're going to be distinguished. And so distinguished means made conspicuous by excellence. So y'all want to be taught today? Amen. Listen, now, this is not something I'm talking about that you're going to get one day. This whole series is about you waking up to what has already been done. See, the devil's deceiving folks. He's trying to make people think they got to work to get somewhere. God's saying, you got this. You just need to obey me. Come on and walk it out. When people get themselves in trouble because, you know, they don't want to do what God said. Then they find themselves trying to get somewhere. God said, that's already yours. And so we are distinguished. So he says, made conspicuous by excellence. 
And what does the word conspicuous mean? Some of you may already know, but I want to give clarity. I like to give a lot of clarity in my sermons. Conspicuous is easily seen or noticed. Come on, somebody. Y'all in here with me today. So if I'm blessed, that means I'm distinguished. And so that means that I am uh, easily seen or noticed. So what? It's not that I'm trying to draw attention to myself. See, people that are trying to draw attention to themselves, they're doing it the world's way. But when you do it God's way, it's the blessing that draws attention to you. Oh, come on, somebody. You don't have to get up and try to impress anybody. Come on. It's the blessing that is causing all eyes to look on you because they see something that they don't see anywhere else. And so we have a lot of carbon copies, a lot of counterfeits, a lot of people saying that this is blessed. Oh, these stars are blessed and there's idol worship and all this type of stuff. And none of those folks are really blessed. Come on, because God's blessing don't lead you to suicide. Come on, somebody. Y'all up in here with me. God's blessing don't lead you to an overdose. Come on, somebody. Huh? Huh? So we've got to understand, well, what is God doing here? What is he saying? So conspicuous may is easily seen or noticed. That's that's what the blessing will do for you. It'll be easily seen or noticed, readily visible. I told you guys, see, oh, some people think, well, you know, it's just it's just my own, you know, my little I like to keep my Christianity to myself. And when you're blessed, you can't keep it to yourself. Oh, come on, somebody. You can't be no secret Christian if you're blessed. If you're a secret Christian, you ain't blessed. Oh, well, I just, you know, nobody knows I'm saved but me and Jesus. You're not even blessed. You might not even be, even be saved. I don't know. I'm just saying. You need to get that together, man. Well, I, you know, I don't want to offend anybody. This ain't about offending people. See, that's the problem. People, you arguing with folks that you don't need to argue. You just need to walk it out. Just walk. Just walk. You ain't got to argue with your neighbors. You ain't got to just walk. Just walk. Mm -hmm. What you do? Just walking. And they'll see it, man. They, they can't. Listen, they can't put on no sunglasses to block out your light. Come on. I'm telling you, man, this is this thing is on you. This is how we live. This is what we have. It has been given to us readily visible or observable. So don't get mad if somebody just stops and starts staring at you. Yeah. You just, you know, mind your business. You're in the line at the bank. Amen. So we in the line at the bank. Amen. That's a good place to be in the line. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. And, and they just looking at you. Now, what we do when we're not walking in revelation is we say, well, well, what you what you looking at? It's like me, you know, when I wasn't in, re you need something? I mean, what's going on? No, but if I'm in the blessing, it says that I'm going to be readily visible or observable. So what does that mean? I'm going to have some people observing me. They going to check. Listen, when you make an observation, it's, it's not a glance. I can't observe. Huh? I observed them over there. That ain't no observation. Observing them. Hey. I'm double, triple taking, man. Come on, you're going to have people double, triple taking on you. Y'all in here, y'all ready for this? Y'all okay with this? And people just like, and then you know they're staring. You're just smiling. Huh? This is, isn't this different? But this was the way this was supposed to be from the beginning. See, all these people then got in there and hijacked God's message. That's why it's important that we go teach the truth. Because they have spread the gospel of lies. They have spread the gospel of being broke down makes you closer to God. That ain't nothing to do with God. God is a healer and a deliverer. Come on, somebody. God is a way maker. God, listen, he'll release the anointing on you that will remove burdens. People are, are so busy about struggling. Glory to God. If you're in ministry and you're struggling, then glory to God. You need the anointing. Because the anointing removes the burden. It removes the pressure. Listen, I don't get tired when I preach. 
Like how much sleep I got last night has nothing to do with this pulpit. I get up in here, man, and I'm energetic. You got some of these tired, sleepy pastors that keep preaching about their problems. They're not anointed. If, that, if you're bringing all your problems across the pulpit, you're not anointed. Huh? You don't need to be. See, people, they want sympathy. I don't want no sympathy. I want you to walk in the blessing. I'm walking in mine. You walk in yours. Let's do this thing together. Amen. You, you see what I'm saying? That way we can give God the proper glory that's due his name. Because it's his doing. And so, conspicuous, easily seen or noticed, readily visible or observable. Now look at this, attracting special attention because of outstanding qualities. I'm just, man, I don't know. See, I, now, I don't know. Don't get mad at me, y'all. I'm just telling you to go with me, okay? Don't get mad at me, go with me. Let's do this thing in the earth. And so he says, you will be attracting special attention because of outstanding qualities. Mm. Look at your name and say, I have some outstanding qualities. Oh, what? Don't, don't, let that, don't let that religious, you know, they call it piety, that old religious false humility. Don't let that get on you. You walk as an anointed ambassador in the earth. You don't walk around here defeated. You walk with your head up, shoulders back. I'm here. Let it be known because you're walking with the king. You're walking with the king of glory who has put the blessing on you. Now, I've given you guys enough to deal with any of these theological. Um, hmm. Debaters, if you will, They're, they may come out with this stuff. Well, you know, you know, I don't believe it. I already told you, you can't pick and choose what you get. You said you want Jesus. Then you get what comes with Jesus. I've already proven it through these other three uh, sermons that you can't just say, I don't want that. It comes with this. So anybody that says, oh, well, that prosperity preaching is not of God. You tell them you're not of God. You might not even be saved. Let me pray for you. Let me get some oil and put it on you right now. You might be on your way to hell. I've been here with that. <laughs> Going out here with that religious junk. And then what they do, all these religious folks, they, they preach against prosperity. All these religious pastors preach against it. And then they want to take up an offering. You preach against it, but you want to take up an offering. Passing a plate around 10 times. Come on, somebody. Listen, if you got to pass it around 10 times, if you didn't get it in the first one, you ain't getting it in the 10th one. They don't have it. The people ain't got the money because you ain't teaching on the blessing. So 10 offerings ain't going to get you no more. You take one offering, teach it, teach people how to be blessed, take one offering and you're good to go. Y'all in here with me? See how this works? Say, well, now we want to pass this around for... The such and such fund. You got all these funds because everybody's broke. You're not teaching about the blessing. And everybody knows about that scheme and set up. And so what do they do? They bring a bunch of ones to church. They bring a bunch of ones. So I got, I got, I'm going to peel off this one for that offering. I'm going to peel this one off. But this one right here going to be for the third offering. We ain't about to be no broke people. Hey man, I tell you, we, we thriving. Y'all, listen, you got to be a part of this. We thriving up here at Word of Life, man. This church is thriving. Glory to God. We got families blessed. I mean, we're, we're blessed. We don't, listen, you never come in here and, and see us just, you know, struggling. Amen. We blessed. I tell the team, I say, hey man, you guys need something. You got to let me know because I don't know all that tech stuff. But if we need something, we're going to buy it. What? Yeah. Well, yeah, ain't no well. We we in order. We're in line. Biblical principles are locked in. And so you cannot be anything but blessed. Amen. And so what I expect is, oh, come on, somebody. If your money's jacked up, listen, you need to get involved with this. Because you're supposed to be blessed. 
You go here, you're supposed to be getting some pay raises. Oh, man, I'm. If you go to this church and you tithing and doing what you're supposed to do, you're supposed to get some pay raises. You're supposed to be making some more money. You're supposed to have stuff working out for you and not against you. Come on. See that? See that way in the people's blessed. So guess what? The church is fine. Oh, no, we don't need no car washers. No, we got blessed people. We don't do all that. We just teach people to tithe. The blessing keeps coming back. Never seen the righteous forsaken, nor see he begging bread. It's same works. Amen. And so expect yourself to be in this place where you're attracting special attention because of outstanding qualities. Now, this is not uh, about just you drawing attention to yourself. This is what's going to it's going to happen. It's like if you put on a jacket that could be seen by everybody. You you can't take it off. You can't put it on and say, I don't want to be seen. It comes with the jacket. And that's how it works with the blessing. Now, we are grafted into this. I have to emphasize this. I can't emphasize this enough. This belongs to you if you're saved. If you're not saved, it don't belong to you. But if you are saved, this comes with this. Go to Galatians 3.29. We've covered this and we're going to keep covering it because you'd be surprised how many people argue against this stuff. But you can't separate it. And if you be Christ, meaning if you belong to Christ. So what does that mean? How do I belong to Christ? I get saved. I call upon the name of Jesus. I shall be saved. I've given my life to him. We've, haven't you heard that? We say I give my life. Uh, we were just singing in here uh, about that. This is that, you know, you don't belong to you. We said I belong to him. Well, if you did that, if you be Christ, then are you Abraham's seed? Hmm? Does it say you might become Abraham's seed? You are. And what else? Heirs according to what? The promise. The promise I was just reading in Genesis chapter 12, 1 and 2, we was focusing on verse 2. In the Amplified Classic where it says you're going to be uh, famous and distinguished. And then we start teaching on distinguished. And I told you, you're going to be uh, a standout and all that type of stuff. Attracting special attention because of, you know, special qualities or, or whatever you call. What do we say? Excellent qualities, outstanding qualities, all this type of stuff. You see that? And so if that's the case, then it's a matter of us just. Simply doing, really receiving what was done for us. That's what I, I would say. Simply receiving what was done for us. And so when we first got introduced to Christianity, in a lot of cases, it was about, you know what, I'd have messed up. Man, I'm, I need God to help me here. I'm uh, Oh, Lord, I'm sorry. I'm, you know, we, we were looking for some mercy. Anybody here with me? You were looking for some mercy. You said, man, I need. And that will lead somebody to Christ. Sometimes people get saved when they're sick. They're going through a sickness. They almost die. They do something. And they go. They give their lives to the Lord because they need some help. Some, some people get saved in jail. Oh, I can't get amen right there. Because if you're up in there, you're going to get a hold of something. Come on, somebody, you're going to have to find something that, that's going to help you. And so a lot of them get saved up in jail. But how I many know oh, that's just the stuff to get you in? But now once you're in there, you got to realize, well, oh, well, what? Listen, I, I went to this because I was dealing with depression or some people was trying to kill me. You know, some people got saved because of that. Amen. I said, man, these people are trying to kill me. I better get saved. Well, that's just the beginning of it. So now that I did that. Oh, what do you mean? There's some other stuff that comes with this. And that's what we have to learn about, because that's what's going to make us effective witnesses in the earth. I mean, oh, if you go around saying I got saved because somebody was trying to kill me. Well, that may not work for someone where nobody's trying to kill them. So you say, man, I was running for my life and I, I called on Jesus and I got saved. They said, well, I ain't running for my life. I mean. 
I'm doing good. Everybody, I got a lot of friends. Everybody like me. So that message is not going to apply to them. You can't just go around saying, uh, God delivered me from drugs. Well, not everybody you meet is going to be a drug addict. And so that that may not work. That witness. So when people don't understand this, then they are stuck in these small spheres of influence. So what does this mean? The ex gangbanger, he's been delivered from gangbanging. He don't have revelation of the blessing. So now the only person he can speak to and minister to is another gangbanger. I mean, no, God's influence is way bigger than this. We're talking about global. I'm talking about you have influence. How, listen, how can you influence somebody in another country? They have a different way of doing things. They don't, come on, somebody, they're not gangbanging in India like they do in L.A. But yet, when you walk in the blessing, then now I can have influence. Y'all in here with me? Are y'all aware of what's going on? This this ministry is influencing people. I showed my wife uh, a picture of, of, of some of the data that I get on this stuff. This ministry, man, has got people like regular followers following us, listening to our podcast. And they're in uh, Germany. I'm sure they got a whole different culture than me. They probably don't even speak Ebonics like I do. You see what I'm saying? But how I many know it don't matter? Because the word of travel, the word of travel over there, and they will apply it and apply the principles. They can apply the principles that I'm teaching you. They can apply it in Germany and get the blessing working in Germany. They can apply the principles and get the, the blessing working in Belgium. Come on, somebody. They can get this blessing working in Kenya. I mean, we got all these places. And have it working and producing. Because it's not limited to any geographical area. It's not limited to a culture. Oh, you know, uh, uh, this is a black church. This is a white church. It, that has nothing to do with anything. That is so small. This stuff is already here. And it's a matter of just teaching people what they have access to. Because once you see yourself like this, you won't accept anything less than this. Now, the problem is people have been accepting too much. Oh, some of y'all too quick to accept anything anybody says about you. Hmm? Most of the time, people will accept a lot of stuff. Your doctor say you're sick. Most of the time, people say, okay. But let them say something like, you're going to be dead in two days. Some of y'all might resist. Oh, I can't get an amen right there. Uh, the doctor may say, you got all these diseases. And you may say, okay, okay, okay. What do I got to take? Okay, I'm fine. I'll take that. Okay, I'm good. But let that doctor come and say, you're going to be dead in two days. Some of y'all might pump the brakes. So I don't receive, uh-uh. Oh, what, say what? Two, huh? What? Well, don't let it get to that before you stop shutting the devil down. You got to shut him down right away. He's trying to make you think that you're not who you really are. You got to shut him down. Because these are lies that will influence your future. Most of the time, people end up Somewhere because they started driving to that destination at one point of their lives. Okay. I'll do it, Lord. You didn't just end up where you are. Oh, man. I, what time is <sighs> Up in the church. People think they just end up, oh, I'm panicking because I'm here. You, you drove there. Huh? You don't end up in a financial problem. Especially if y'all been coming here. You didn't heard a lot of me preaching. Now, you don't just end up somewhere. You get there because of the seeds that have been sown. And I've been trying to teach you to show bet, sow better seed so you get a better harvest. You don't just end up sick and body falling apart. That stuff started a long time ago. Huh? Oh, some of y'all, you didn't see because some of you, it become unconscious. You come in here and I say, don't say this. Don't speak that. Don't speak that. Then you get in the parking lot and you speak what I said. Don't speak. Because that's habitual. That's why anybody who comes here, 
You're not just going to be a member. You're going to be my disciple. Because I'm going to train you. On how to live every time you come. I'm going to be uprooting unbelief. I'm going to be uprooting bad behaviors, bad thoughts. Come on, somebody. You'll start to think a different way. It's like, what am I being brainwashed? Yes, you are. I am brainwashing you with this word. So you will come up out of word of life and you will be different. You will not be like your cousin who go to church and ain't saved. You know, we all got some cousins that go to, yeah, ain't saved. So we, we teach them about what needs to be taught. So and if you be Christ, meaning you belong to Christ, then are you Abraham's seed? And then what? Heirs according to the promise. I don't have to do nothing to get this. I just got to receive Jesus. I'm an heir. Listen, if, if you find out you had a loved one that passed away and left you a bunch of money, all you're going to have to do is prove your identity. That's all you got to do. Prove your identity. That's all we got to do with God. Prove your identity. Prove that you are with me. And then the way we do that is he's going to see it. Christ lives in me. The hope of glory. Amen. All right. So now we are grafted into this. Now go to Isaiah. I'm gonna, I'm, I don't want y'all to be scared of this, man. We got to start walking like we're supposed to. Isaiah 61 9. We'll look at this one in the Amplify Classic. And their offspring shall be known. See that? So now we're talking about offspring. That's that seed. You are the seed of Abraham. You're grafted in because we belong to Christ. And their seed shall be known among what? The nations. And their seed shall be known among the nations and their descendants among the people. All who see them, y'all don't mind me teaching this. I'm going to just teach it that way. You won't let anything block you from it. And all that see, all who see them in their prosperity, see that? Will recognize and acknowledge that they are the people whom the Lord has what? So this is way past. How are you doing today? Blessed. Okay. Everybody's saying that. Amen. But this right here says all that see them in their prosperity. Now, what is prosperity? Prosperity is a successful, flourishing, or thriving condition. Y'all getting this? So now because I'm blessed, I'm supposed to be successful. Oh, come on. I'm supposed to be flourishing. Come on, somebody. I'm supposed to be thriving. So it says prosperity, a successful, flourishing or thriving condition. Y'all ready for this? Especially in financial respects. Look at your name and say, you're supposed to have some money. I mean, what's really going on? Amen. Then God ain't going to take care of his people. No, you're supposed to have some money. Hmm. Now, doesn't mean that you got to go out and say, well, I'm going to buy this and buy that. If God tells you to buy it, go ahead, do your thing. But you're not supposed to be coming up short every month. That ain't, that's all wrong, man. That's somebody lied to you. You're not supposed to be coming up short in no areas. Now, I'm one of those pastors most people don't like because I know how to connect the dots. Obedience always brings blessing. Disobedience always brings the curse. It is what it is. Amen. Most of the time somebody gets themselves in a bad situation, they ain't been doing what they're supposed to do. It is what it is. But if you're doing what you're supposed to do, you're blessed. And this is, is something that we need to pay attention to and, and make sure that it's, it's flowing in our lives. I, 
it, this is not just for me. Right? Because let me just read this again. Back it up. He says, and their offspring shall be known among the nations and their descendants among the people. All who see them. See that? That's your witness. Y'all in here with me. Then I've been teaching about how you, you can be in the grocery store or in the bank getting observed. All who see them. But how are they going to see you? In their prosperity. See, now what does Satan do? He tries to water this down because he knows that if you don't have a revelation of God's prosperity, you don't have a revelation of God's blessing. And if you don't have a revelation of God's blessing, you can't defeat him. And so what you're going to do is talk against it. And so you're going to speak against it. And then so you're going to be like one of those people that are, you know, hating on others and all this type of stuff. He says here. And they will see them all that see them in their prosperity will recognize and acknowledge what? That they are the people whom God is blessed. So this draws the attention to God and not you. And so people are not supposed to come up to you and say, man, you just look so healthy. You're just, you're just so great. It's supposed to be drawing attention to God. So now you can be a good witness and you can quickly say it's all God. It's all God. Amen. When you have nice things or, or you're able to, uh, you know, even do things, you're good at doing stuff. This is not so that you can draw attention to yourself. It is so that you would be that good witness and then leads people to your God. Amen. But you're not going to win the sinner if they're doing better than you. Did y'all get that? You're not going to win the sinner by going over there telling them all your problems. You're not about to win your, you know, your cousin, your auntie or whoever you're trying to. You can't witness to them after you just cried and spilled out all your problems to them. You need to get you a brother or sister in the Lord who can effectively pray with you and pray for you and share with them. But don't go keep telling everybody everything and you expect now, oh, you want to go to church with me? No, I'm cool. Right? They're supposed to see us blessed. That's what they're, now we have that, we do, like as Christians, we're not exempt from going through things, but we should have, you know, trusted circles. Amen? Try, I try to teach my leaders this, and, and I got some good leaders now, praise the Lord for that. But I, I had a bunch of them that wasn't no good. I'm just telling them like it is. They couldn't follow simple stuff. Like, I'm your pastor. I'll be there for you. You got a problem? Call me. I'll be over there and I'll help you and we'll counsel. We'll go through it. No, they don't want to call me. They want to call the church members. Wait, you're a leader. How are you going to call them? They're looking up to you and your stuff is all jacked up. So what are they supposed to do now? Amen. I don't expect my leaders calling, you know, the members of the church. How are you doing today? I'm just struggling, brother. I'm just calling you, man, because I don't know if I'm going to make it. Wait, who is this? <laughs> what are you going to say? Who, who is this? And then you're going to say, you, you know, now, wouldn't you think like, dang. Like, if you can't call the pastor. Huh? You're on the leadership team and you can't even call the pastor. I know I ain't calling him for sure. <laughs> he won't do that. Now you got to have your, like I said, you have your trusted circles. But the problem is, is people want more of what comes through the world. Like the sympathy. I don't care about no sympathy. I want the blessing. I want the blessing. I don't need to get a bunch of uh, sympathy cards and flowers and stuff. I just want, I want the blessing. I want God blessing my life and I want to do what's going to keep me in that place where that blessing is flowing without any restrictions. Amen. Amen. Praise God. And so uh, prosperity, once again, a successful, flourishing or thriving condition, especially in, re in financial respects. 
So this is what they're supposed to see. Now let's go to, uh, let, me, let me put that back up there, make sure I covered all that last scripture of um, Isaiah 61, 9. Okay, that's, I covered that. Now let's go to Deuteronomy 28, 10 through 11. All right, and all people, so y you, you guys notice this? You, you see the theme? All people. So whether you want them to look at you or not, they're going to look at you. All people of the earth shall see. What are they going to do? They're going to see it. All people of the earth shall see that thou art called by the name and in the presence. So when they see you, they're supposed to see God with you. Because this is about fellowship, right? They will all see that you are called by uh, the name and in the presence of the Lord and they shall be afraid of you. Now, what does this mean? This is not that they're running from you and they're scared of you like that. This is reverence. They're going to reverence you because think of, think of the way people treat celebrities today. Okay. If they see a celebrity in the store, they're somewhat of an awe. Come on, somebody. They're just telling the truth. Come on. They're somewhat of an awe. They're somewhat of a like, whoa, it's kind of a, a backup. Most of the time, people don't just try to act like they didn't see him. You know what I mean? Come on, just being honest. You know, you're just up in the store and you're just like, oh, Michael Jordan, that's Michael Jordan. <laughs> it's my, it's Michael Jordan over there. You, come on, man. Maybe y'all don't care about Michael Jordan, whatever it is. Whatever thing you like. We're just people. And so that's common. Now, we're not to jump into idol worship or nothing like that, but there's something about the person that it draws your attention because you happen to know who they are. Well, what this is saying is people are going to see us. They're going to know God bless us. And then they're going to be, let's read it again. It says afraid, but it's going to be an awe. One of the translations says it's an awe. All people of the earth shall see that you are called by the name and in the presence of the Lord and they shall be afraid of you. If you have it, I don't know if you have the, in, uh, if you can get it quick, the NLT, put that one up there and see if it says all, because one of these words is standing all. There it is. Then all the nations of the world will see that you are a people claimed by the Lord and they will stand in awe of you. Are y'all seeing this? But are you guys okay with this? So you got to get all those years of church, all those years of religion, you got to get them up out of your life. All you want to keep is the fact that you got saved and maybe you start learning this Bible, but these traditions will mess you up. But when this word is saying that people are going to stand in awe of you, you're like, who, me? I'm nothing. Oh, see, now you now you talking against God. How are you going to call yourself nothing? But he called you an ambassador. I mean, come on. Who, whose side are you on? The devil is the one that calls you nothing. God says you are more than a conqueror. God says you are fearfully and wonderfully made. Well, you got to come into agreement with him. His book says that people are going to see you and know that you've been claimed by him. And they're going to stand in awe of you. Amen. Now, listen, this is different than bragging. When you go around trying to brag, you go around telling people, you know, most of the time people that brag are lying. <laughs> that most of the time I found that out in my life. Most of the time they lying. You know, they, they run around, you know, got acting like they got some money. That ain't their money. Hey Amen. They got it. You know, got this wad and they got that wad with a 120 on the outside. <laughs> and all the rest is ones. Right. They don't have no money. But when you have this, listen, you you're not going to be trying to get people to say, hey, do you see me? People will literally come up to you, man. I've had this happen in my life. I'm just minding my own business. And look, you don't have to be in no uh, fancy clothes. You could be at the car wash, washing your car in some old sweats or something. And people, man, they see you and they come up to you. I didn't have them come up to me everywhere in the store and the 
man, when I'm not in church, I have one of the uh, people that used to go here. I saw him recently. I said, I had on my little Nike. Most time, you guys, if you ever see me out, out of here, I'm normally running around with a Nike hat on and some shorts. But I said, man, I didn't, you know, recognize you because i would be normally seeing you with a suit. Like, well, I'm not about to roll up in Walmart with no suit on. I mean, I'm just trying, you know. I ain't going, what do I look like going up in there with a suit on? <laughs> right? But my point is, it doesn't matter, man. You, you got the blessing on you. You just don't push it away. Don't try to make it like you're so, some people, oh, dang, God be giving me these things. Some people be trying to look broke. Why are you trying to look broke? Well, I don't want nobody to know I got this money. That ain't your money anyway. <laughs> Amen? So bo- it goes both ways. You don't have to try to look rich. Don't try to look broke. Just walk it out. Because what I'm teaching you, this is about spiritual. See, this is about, it's going beyond what's seen through the natural eye. It's what's seen spiritually. Amen? And then God has taken us somewhere. And so they are going to see you and they will stand in awe of you. And so we can be excited about this. Well, next verse, I think it's a little more in there. Um, Oh, yeah, let's go back to the. uh, No, you can keep, excuse me, you can keep it on the Amplified Classic. Thank you. And so this is what he's going to do. And the Lord shall make you have a what? Is, Is God saying anything here today? Is this is this being made clear to anyone? And the Lord. So who going to make you? You're going to get three jobs and that's how you're going to get your surplus. See, some people say, well, you know, I got to get my money right. So I got to get another job. Okay, well, praise the Lord. But um, I haven't seen you in church in a long time. Oh, yeah. But, you know, I'm getting my money right. How many know that money can't keep you? Oh, what, what happens when the devil comes attacking your body? Amen. Now you got three jobs and you can't show up for none of them. Because you failed to prioritize. So I ain't got to work three jobs to get the blessing working. Amen. I got to honor God. I got to do what's right in the eyes of God. And the Lord shall make you have a surplus. Huh? So we supposed to have overflow. Look at your name and say, you should have more than enough. Amen. Amen. You shouldn't be in no situation where something happens. You got to get a new water heater. And you know what? It's just the wheels fall off of everything. God's going to get you in a better position than that. But you're going to have to obey to get there. Right. Amen. Amen. Now. And the Lord shall make you have a surplus of prosperity Okay, I'm just, I'm just teaching, man. Some of y'all, whoo, if you go with this, your life's going to be better. Amen. This is not just money. This is not just finance. Because some people think they, they're doing okay financially. God doesn't stop there. That's not God's definition of prosperity. Money is a part of it, but it's not all of it. It's wholeness. It's everything. I'm talking about everything working in your life. My wife will get up here and teach about it. This is about everything. I'm talking about you're supposed to have peace in your house. Come on. You're supposed to have good health in your house. Come on, somebody. You're supposed all oh, your relationships are supposed to be good. You're supposed to have favor on your job. You're supposed all this stuff. Yes. Amen. Amen. And the Lord shall make you have a surplus of prosperity through the fruit of your body. So your body's healthy. Are y'all ready for this? And so are your kids. Ah. Yes. Uh. This is what should be happening. I'm not telling you to feel bad if you're not experiencing health, but you need to say, hold on. I got to get this blessing flowing. All of us, we doing well. Amen. Come on. You you ought to expect come flu season or whatever they call it. You ought to expect it to miss your house. Anybody here with me? You ought to say, oh, we missed that. We skipped it. We, we opted out. Amen. Because you're blessed. Now, once again, this doesn't mean, okay, if you're going through something, 
My preaching is not to discourage you, it's to get you to stretch for something greater. It's to get you to understand that, wait, God has more in store. Are you, Pastor, are you saying God has more in store for me? Yes, I am. And I'm proving it to you in the book. This was, is what your expectation should be. You should expect to have peace in your house. If you've got a bunch of chaos going on in your house, you need to say, hold on, wait, let me, I, this is, I'm, I should have peace here. I mean, you ought to be able to just nod off on the couch if you want to. Amen. Some folks, man, they can't, they can't fall asleep in their own house. They'd be like, got one eye open, like, man, I'm seeing what's going on up in here, man. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> man, shouldn't be like that, right? So, and the Lord shall make you have a surplus of prosperity through the fruit of your body, of your livestock. And so now we're starting to talk about your belongings, your possessions. Amen. Livestock was animals, but this is going into our possessions uh, and, and, you know, investments and all these type of things. And of your livestock and of your ground. I mean, we're supposed to have houses and lands. And so even your whole property or all the properties you own are supposed to be blessed. And the land which the Lord swear, swore to give to your fathers. To, uh, yeah, to your father. So that's, you know, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. So you're right in line for that blessing. And so this is supposed to be flowing. So now if I set my expectations, my expectations are reset, then I'm expecting this. Not only do I expect to have land, but I expect it to be blessed. Yeah. If, 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 glory to God. If you don't have land, well, deal with what you got right now. Let's say it's, it's, it's you got a house. Well, expect that house to be blessed. Yeah. Expect that, oh no, can nobody even get in my backyard? They can't come taking nothing out of here. I mean, nobody does that. Amen. You have to have that. We have that expectation for the church. Ain't nobody coming up in here doing nothing. Uh uh. Because we're blessed. Now, this works against some of the people's uh, ideas of, of, you know, when you get a revelation of this, you realize that God's responsible for you. You're not responsible for yourself. Listen, you're not being kept safe because you have a nine millimeter under the, uh, your, your seat of your car. That is not keeping you from getting jacked in the uh, ATM drive through. Oh, some of y'all don't want to. I don't want to go out at night because, you know, I don't want to get you blessed. Huh? You blessed. You can't you can't get jacked. Y'all, hey, you can't prove me wrong on this. When I wasn't blessed, I was, hey, I was subject to get jacked. So I used to make some, you know, I used to make sure that I was a little prepared. I mean, you know, you try to break away from some of these habits, but I was one of those dudes that's like, don't go out, don't go out at night with some slippers on. Come on. See what I mean? You know, like the little slides that you wear at the house and stuff when you're just chilling in the house or you go to the backyard, you got your little slide, don't wear those. Don't wear those to the gas station. Because if you got to get it in, man, you <laughs> come on. Y'all so, anybody with me? If hey, you in the gas station and you got to get it in, you need some sneakers on. You need your feet. You need your feet. You need your grip. You need your balance. Let's around and get out there with some slides getting whooped on. <laughs> huh? Yeah. Socks all jacked up. Hey. Nah, man, I didn't see, I didn't experience some, some of these things in my life with some folks that got whooped up out of their shoes and all kind of stuff. But see that I'm still, you know, being renewed. You know what I mean? I still don't wear no slides to the gas station at night, but I'm still being renewed. I'm just, I'm being renewed. I am being renewed. You see me at the gas station at night, I will have on. Some tennis shoes. <laughs> it just shows we're all still growing. <laughs> Praise the Lord. But it's, listen, God is responsible for you. So he's the one that's going to keep you. He's the one that's going to protect you. He's the one that's going to provide for you. He's the one that's going to make your body act right. Come on, somebody. It'll be the blessing of God that'll put pressure on illness. It'll put pressure on sickness 
and evict it out of your body. Man. This is, this is sweatless victory stuff I'm talking about. But all God wants is his people to trust him. Believe me, I said it. And that's what I meant. And Jesus paid the price for us to live this way. Go to Revelation 5.12. Revelation 5.12. King James. So he says, saying with a loud voice, worthy is the lamb that was slain. So I mean, no, he was slain. We also looked at Galatians 3, 13 and 14. You know, he was nailed to that cross so that we can get this blessing. But Revelation 5, 12, he says, saying with a loud voice, worthy is the lamb that was slain to receive power. I mean, I've taught this for years, but he already had power. So he didn't need to be slain to get no power because, I mean, he had power. He was there when everything was made. But he had to do that so that you can get the power. He had to do that so that you can get access to the power. He was slain to receive power and riches. How many know Jesus had no problem with money? Hmm? Peter came to him and said, uh, or we, we got to pay these taxes or whatever. Jesus didn't say, well, you better get you a better CPA that can get us up out of these taxes. That's what some people try to do today. They try to cut corners. If you got enough money, you ain't got to cut no corner. Amen. Give them what's due. And stay in the blessing. Amen. I don't like paying my taxes because I don't like what they do with the money. They, they never asked you about what they was going to do with the money. They said you're going to pay it or you end up in jail. But when you're walking in the blessing, you just whatever. I'm not worried about that. Amen. And so what happened? Because Jesus, I'm saying this because he had riches before he was slain. So he didn't have to get, be slain to get no riches. Because he told Peter, just go on and grab the, uh, go over there and get the coin out of the fish's mouth. And then we'll go ahead and pay the taxes with that. Then the other time, Peter was out there trying to catch fish. And uh, Jesus just broke the whole system. He said, no, we don't. You can't catch fish in the daytime because they will see this net. But when you're walking in the blessing, when you're walking in the anointing, then money is attracted to you. Amen. Come on, somebody. Money is attracted to you. And so as far as Jesus, every fish in that lake was going to fight each other to get in that net. In the daytime. Even though they saw the net. And so he didn't need to be slain to get riches. He did that so that you can have access to it. Amen. Worthy is the lamb that was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing. He had it all, but he was slain so that now it could be offered to you. How I many of y'all could with all confidence say, I, I received that. Come on, let's, let's just say it, back it up again. We're going we're gonna to re read this and make sure we receive this. Okay. Look at your name and say, I received the power. I received the power. Look at him and say, I received the riches. I received the riches. Okay. Look at him and say, I received the wisdom. I received the wisdom. And I received the strength. And I received the strength. And one more. Oh, yeah, flip it real quick. And I received the honor. And I received the glory. And I received the blessing. And I received the blessing. See, the blessing is what gives you access to all of this. Amen. Amen. But don't fight God. Just receive it. Don't argue with him. Just receive it. Do what he told you to do. And so you got to receive it and then walk in it. So here it is. This is the challenge for us. Walk in it. Oh, I'm, what? Don't be apologizing. Walk on it. Amen. Walk in that thing. I, I seen brother, uh, brother Kevin show up to the men's meeting. I said, man, this brother, he showed up with this stroll. He was like, huh? <laughs> I said, okay, we go, hey, man, we gonna have us a good time tonight. <laughs> I'm just saying. So I wasn't going to think that he might be depressed. <laughs> I could see it. And that's the way we got to be. When you show up places, don't be frowning. 
Don't be showing up at the restaurant. You're supposed to be the blessed people came from church and you upset because they got you in there waiting too long. So what? You might get some people saved up in there. Come on. You, you never know, man. It, listen, God is responsible for you. So he's ordering your stuff. So if it's a delay, oh man, what if you were a blessing? You know, you got this waitress and she's all frazzled. She's new. She don't know what's going on. And then here you are, the Christian from the church. I didn't get my drink. I need a refill. And you got the waitresses and I arguing. I don't want to work on Sunday. I'll take every other day, but not Sunday. Why? Because church people come on Sundays. They're the meanest ones up in here. It's, I'm, tell, I'm telling the truth. I ain't making this up. I ain't making this up. You know what I mean? Expecting them to bend over backwards for you to give them a good tip. They just, you blast. They could have did a terrible job. They could have had, oh, y'all ready for this? They could have been having a bad attitude. And instead of you talking with your people at the table saying, don't it seem like she got a bad attitude? What's that doing? Did you hear, did you hear her tone? She might not know you blessed. Amen. But you prove it to her. Give her a good tip. Amen. Y'all getting this? Yeah. See, this is we are standouts. We don't do what everybody else does. Right. Listen, everybody does this. Somebody cuts you off, you you honk at them. Everybody honks at them. You're not distinguished if you're honking at people. Come on, somebody. You're not set apart. <laughs> you're not doing anything different when they cut you off, and then you say, "Okay, I'm going to cut you off," and then we're going to go back and forth. You're not setting yourself apart from anyone. But you get cut off, you get honked at, and, you, and even if somebody, you know, gets aggressive, and I'm, glory to God, I'm still working on it, but they, they looking at you crazy or something, just, hey, God bless you. We're all striving to get somewhere. I haven't got to that part yet, but I'm, you know, I'm, I'm hey, man, I'm working on it. I ain't got there yet. I do. I have got to the point where I back out of it. You know what I mean? Because initially it's like, Ugh! and then it's like, okay, Holy Spirit, Ugh! get out of there. Amen. But we can work on these things. Why? Because I have to be distinguished. I got to be different. I got to be a standout. If I'm just doing what everybody else is doing, I'm not drawing attention to God. Go to Isaiah 60. Now, this is what we're supposed to do. This is why I said we got to walk it out because we have such a big uh, what you call it, mission field. There's such a big mission field out there for us. And so he says, arise and shine for thy light is come and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. So his glory is going to be seen on us. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth and gross darkness the people, but the Lord shall arise upon thee and his glory shall be seen upon thee. And so Light dispels darkness. So the way the darkness leaves is the light shows up. And we can't just complain about darkness. Amen. We can't just complain about darkness. We need to rise and shine. We need to let some light come into all these places that we may go to. And then don't argue with people. Just let them see you walking in the blessing. This thing is going to work for you, man. Don't argue. Don't debate with people. Just let them see it. That's the problem. That's why many don't believe. Because they don't see it. Too many Christians are uptight. Christians are upset. Christians are fighting for all these things instead of just walking in the blessing. God's like, man, I got this. What are y'all doing? I got all of this. I just need you to walk it out. And then now the glory is going to come to him. We'll close with this scripture, Matthew 5, 14 through 16 in the King James. So this is what we've got to do. You are the light of the world. Why? Because Jesus is in me. 
As long as I got Jesus in me, then man, my light is shining. He says, you are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick, and it giveth light unto all that are in the house. Look at this. The way you're going to do this is by walking in the blessing. You don't, you're not in no debates. You're not fussing. You're not, people want to get in front of you. Go ahead. Yeah, they, there's a line to get in somewhere. Somebody say, oh, I was right here. Oh, okay, yeah, you go ahead. You can have it. Because you're in the blessing. That's why Abraham, he told Lot, you can pick what you want. And Lot said, I'm going to pick what looks good. See, people that are not in the blessing, they go for what looks good all the time. I need to be first. That's mine. That's mine. You just got the hamburger that wasn't all the way cooked. <laughs> mine is, <laughs> mine is well do, doing good. Amen. Don't rush yourself up into some trouble. Amen. So let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works. And what are they going to do if they see your good works? It's not, it's not for you. It's not, they're not going to see your good works and say, you're so great. You're all these things. They're going to see your good works and then they're going to glorify your father, which is in heaven. That's what we want. Now, all of a sudden you will have people saying, man, can I go to church with you? Like, can I, you know, because they see something. They see something. That's the best influence you can have, especially on your family members. Sometimes family members are the hardest to win, but our greatest influence is by letting them see, just simply let them see. Like God spoke to me about this. I don't have to tell them things anymore. I've already done that. I don't have to do any of that. I don't say, hey, you need to stop it. No, I just need to expose them to me. I, they, they, they just need to see what the blessing looks like. So I'm one of those people. I'm not going around trying to correct all my family and say, hey, you got to stop it. Uh. They ask me how I'm doing. Blessed. Doing well. How's the family? Great. Amen. And now they're exposed to it. Well, they're supposed to see it in me. And then God gets the glory. So it's not about me telling them what they're doing wrong. It's about me allowing them to see what I'm doing right. Amen. Y'all in here with me? This is how this works. Go ahead and clap for the Lord. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. Let's close in prayer. Let's close in prayer. Father, we just thank you in the name of Jesus for blessing us this morning. We've had this opportunity to hear your word. We've had this opportunity to receive it. And we do believe that we've received it on good ground. And there's going to be an abundant harvest coming forth from our lives. Now, I pray right now, if there's anyone watching this right now, maybe listening to this at a later time, and, and you don't know Jesus as Lord. Well, we want to invite you into this family. He's here. He's ready for you and he'll gladly receive you. But you must be willing to just give your life over and let him be your master. Church, let's repeat this prayer so that anyone who hears this message, they will know how to receive Jesus as Lord. Repeat after me, Jesus, please forgive me for all of my sins. I commit my life into your hands. This day I am saved. Do with me as you please and fill me with the power of the Holy Ghost in Jesus name. Amen. Give the Lord a hand clap right there. Amen. Praise God. So with all of that, we're going to be those commercials. Amen. We're going to be those that are walking in the earth, simply letting our light shine. We're no longer in the business of trying to fix things and, and all this stuff and worried about it. We're just going to walk through the earth and let the light of God that's been placed in us shine so that it will be seen by all that we encounter.
How many of y'all got that kind of confidence? Amen. Praise God. Clap for the Lord. Amen. Just stand to your feet. I'm going to release this blessing on you. I mean, we've covered it through this series. I'm just going to, you could stand right there. I'm going to release the power. I want you to receive it. I want you to know that you got a right to it, that this is yours, that all this that I've been preaching belongs to you. Amen. Belongs to you. Everything that I preach, all that has been spoken through these series, it's all yours. And don't let the devil deceive you and trick you and make you think that it's not yours. Amen. Praise God. Stretch your hands to heaven. Father, we just thank you. Now I ask that you bless this, your people. Lord, we've preached what you've told us to preach. We've com completed our assignment at this stage. Now I ask, Lord, for harvest. I'm asking for fruit. I'm expecting results. I'm expecting healing to come forth in the name of Jesus. I'm expecting financial prosperity to come forth in the name of Jesus. I'm expecting soundness of mind to come forth. I'm expecting to get some testimonies of what you have done. Oh, we thank you, Lord. We believe by faith right now in the name of Jesus that everything that's been promised to us, we will get it. We will not be denied. We shall not be shortchanged of anything. We thank you, Lord, that it's all ours and it's already done because we are the blessed of the Lord. We praise you and honor you. We magnify your name. We thank you, Lord. How many of y'all believe that today? Come on, somebody. Clap for the Lord.